may not be able to save this without putting a lot of time and money and effort into it. Hey guys, I forgot to film an intro on my sidewall delamination video. Now this video takes place on a 2003-2004 Itasca Sundancer, which is pretty much a Winnebago Mini Winnie. So it's on a Ford chassis Class C unit. The front bunk overhead area has been getting wet from the leaking roof, which of course I'm replacing the roof on this one too, but so I'm doing the roof, we can do that delamination. A lot of people have asked how to uh, relaminate a sidewall. So here's just a little bit of how it's done. And that's why most people don't relaminate an entire sidewall. But anyways, thanks a lot guys. I need to relaminate this wall right there. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm sure a lot of people want to see how to do that. It's, it's going to be identical to how we do a roof. What most people don't understand is when a sidewall delaminates, it's not so much the adhesive failure on the phylon to the luon, it's that the luon got wet. And the luon's made up of three layers. You got one, two, three. And you see how easily they open up just like book pages? So even if you were to re-glue the phylon to this layer, it's still going to be loose to this layer. And even if you re-glue this layer to this layer, it's still going to be loose to that layer. And you see this whole thing shifts? You'll never get this thing to lay down flat again, no matter how much a vacuum bonding epoxy you use on it eventually you're gonna have something that's underneath there that's crooked and so it won't ever lay flat so the only real way to relaminate is to take it all the way back down nice to the uh, original layer of, uh, of foam and put new luon down and it's very tedious because in order to do that you have to get everything out of the way Everything that's underneath it is uh, holding it down. Or everything that's on top of it is holding it down. So I'm going to take all this molding apart and see what we can do and see at that point. So we may not be able to save this without putting a lot of time and money and effort into it. And it may not be worth it. So we'll have to decide once we get it taken apart. So I'm just taking the... Uh, that this insert off get to the screws of course the screws are out of the molding and it's hard to see through all the mess down here what's going on but I know that he added some metal and some screws and definitely some more screws underneath so I got lots of screws to take out I'm pretty confident you can see water was just holed up right there even though there's a weep hole in the uh, That insert looks like it's still got clogged. All right, let's get the rest of that off. Oh well. All right, so let's we'll see what's going on right here. I know I used some galvanized steel right there. You shouldn't use galvanized steel because these are made out of aluminum. And of course, we don't want to mix our metals. Okay. <laughs> of course, it's butyl. It's uh, stronger than you think it would be. All right, so now we can see what's going on here. And this front cap's delaminated, but that they weren't that concerned about. So I can only do the things that I'm concerned about. So this does peel back pretty easily. I guess I'm afraid it would. And I was also afraid that I was gonna see a lot of Luan on the backside right here. So what I have to do is decide if I want to go deeper into this, because in order to glue it down, I need to get rid of all of this. This will actually separate fairly easily in comparison to that on the Luon. This is going to be a big job, guys. Just hoping. Just hoping. Yeah, it was 
going to come out a lot better than this. All right. I'm going to take this molding down. I was hoping there'd be a seam on it, but there's not even a seam except for way back there. Whew. There's always one more thing. But I need to get this out of the way so I can get this uh, sidewall a little bit more loose. So this is turning into quite the job. I think I can pop it up right about like that. And we should be okay. Alright, that's a good plan. Okay, so this is going to be where it gets really quite tedious. I can pull this back quite a bit. I could pull back more if I took these screws out down here. <clears throat> All right, so that gives me pretty good access inside now. Now, what I can tell you is a few things. Pylon's an awful lot like sheet metal in the sense that it's actually very durable in, in one direction and very, very brittle in another direction. So. All right, so some of you guys may not have seen my videos before. This is what's known in the industry as Phylon. I don't have any specs on it, so I won't tell you how thick it is or what it's made out of. It is a fiberglass plastic. You can kind of see the fibers in there. And you have uh, one side that's finished and protected, and the other side that's not finished, and that's not UV stable on this side. So if you go backwards, you're gonna have problems. It's just glued to Luon. This is just standard eighth inch Luon. And that's the material. If we were to fold this too much, it will break. It just breaks, it snaps in half. So we can't bend it too much or else it'll break and then we have to do a fiberglass repair. Uh, and it's the reason why there's Luon behind this and they just don't glue this straight to the foam is that Phylon needs to have a backing support on it. So it's usually gonna be uh, that eighth inch uh, paneling, uh, plywood. Sometimes it uh, looks like cereal box chipboard, which is another problem. But we won't talk about that right now. If it doesn't have a backing on it in the heat, the phylum will actually just deform and start to crinkle on its own, which is why once the, uh, the backing on these, the, the Luon gets wet, it starts to deform. It's not so much that the, uh, the paneling underneath is deforming, it's because the Luon is deforming itself. Uh, if it does deform, you can actually just get a heat gun, heat it up, and it'll actually get back to its memory. It actually does remember its memory pretty well. So, the next step is to carefully remove all this Luon. This front section right there shouldn't be too bad. I'll have to decide what to do at that seam right there, because I can only get it back so far. I mean, ideally, I'd probably like to just leave it at that seam and shut, instead of try to fix all this. We'll see what I come up with, because we're trying to do this as inexpensively and less destructive as possible. It's pretty easy to see that's where it stops being damaged. So I could make a new seam right there. A lot of it's just going to determine how easily it's coming off the... Uh, the file on itself. All right. So let's go ahead and pull this off. This will be a lot like doing the roof. It should separate fairly easily just with a little bit of manual effort. If you take it down with a put putty knife to the next layer and separate that. Let's see how easy that separates on a, on a rotten lou on. One layer at a time method works pretty well too. But yeah, this is why vacuum bonding epoxy repairs that you might see online, nobody ever does a really good close up view of it because it doesn't ever look very good afterwards. It might be stabilized, but it doesn't look good. And that's the, that's the whole reason why you're doing it, anyways, I think. They build it like this, and I don't they build it like that. I don't build them. I don't tell you that. A lot of RVs are based on weight, so you have to keep the weight down, otherwise, you're gonna overwork your engine on your chassis. 
in your suspension and a lot of RV manufacturers, even with this method, build them too heavy. And obviously price is always a concern. So I'm just gonna be separating these layers right like that. That's why I said this will get tedious, especially when it comes to right here, because I don't want to damage this right here. We're doing our best not to have to do any paint work or body work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and start tearing this apart. I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. All right, so what we got going on right here, I did able to get all that pulled off there with minimal damage to the styrofoam. And of course, I still have to take this last layer off the phylon itself. If I leave that on there, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it'll be a very visible bump, and then it won't adhere at the at the, the layers right here. I think I can go ahead and get some glue behind these that are uh, that are loose right there and get that glued back down. Otherwise, trying to make another seam way back here is going to be fairly expensive. So I'm going to try that method first. So this is going to be the most amount of uh, uh, space right here. So this is the most important thing to get secured down. And of course, I'll be able to glue this back to here really easily. And then that should hold it together pretty well. So the next step is to take this off. And this is going to be the time-consuming tedious. This was tedious, but this was mind-numbingly tedious to get this tiny little thin layer off. So that's where we're at for now. Oh, that's pretty cool. You see the striping right there? That is actually from the decals because they get hot. <laughs> you wouldn't think so, but isn't that crazy? It kind of burns inside the, uh, the, the Luan like that. All right, so here's me trying to explain how tedious this is. So once you get a little edge started, you can start working it down. But you can't push against this or else you'll tear it. It's just a matter of getting in between and tearing it off. That's why this is tedious. Otherwise, you have to completely relaminate the sidewall. So I'm making pretty good progress here. Again, you have to be careful because any mistake. And you go through the, uh, and you rip the uh, file on. So you can't just be aggressive here. And then we still have to come back and get all the uh, adhesive off. All right, guys. So, like I said, that was tedious. Uh, let's take a look at it. So I have that section removed now. There's still the adhesive on there, so I'm going to have to use some, uh, uh, got it, general person of adhesive cleaner to get there, all the remnants off that I can. We have to make sure we don't get any of this on the foam because it will eat the foam and then we have problems again. So that's the next step. I'll just spray that down and then I have my favorite razor scraper in the world. Just using a nice brand new razor scraper. Scrape it all off as much as we can, wipe it down. Got my tripod, and then we'll get ready to glue this thing back together. I mean, you can see the plywood in the front cap. It did get wet, but it's not rotten. It's definitely getting rot wet down here. And of course, I did just get it wet, but still not rotten. That goes all the way across. All right, guys, again, uh, it's not fine art, but I did manage to scrape it all clean. No adhesive on this now. Now we can get a piece of glue on, glue that on, and glue this back on. I'm still a little concerned by this. I'm not sure what could or will be done. Ooh, it's 
hard to know. Hi right, guys, it's been a while. I haven't explained it before. And if anybody else hasn't explained it before, this current situation in the world has made getting the simplest of things much more difficult than it ever needs to be. And uh, of all the things that I have a hard time getting, Luan paneling has been a difficult thing to find locally. Because I guess there's a lumber shortage going on right now too. That's just RV parts. I guess it's just the world we live in. Let's get back to work. Well, there it is. Four by eight sheets of uh, eighth inch Luan paneling, brand new. We did find them eventually. Now we can start rebuilding this. Right, where I left off, because this was uh, loose, of course I had to secure it while I waited to find the uh, paneling. Otherwise, we would have damaged it. And what we're trying not to do is rip this. That's the whole reason why we're going through all this effort. We rip it, then we have to do all the body work. It's just like a fiberglass repair. So let me get this all cleaned off. Alright, so when we're going to do the uh, the wood to wood, we're going to use the Stabon 440C or the red stuff. The 183 stuff. Let's see. Yeah. The foam stuff, when we're going to foam, is going to be the 183. So it's really just going to be contact cement. Just spray both surfaces and then roll it out. Uh, I'll get the uh, new piece of paneling, cut the size. It'll just be a rough size. I'm not going to try to make it perfect because that's just going to be an impossible task to do. I'll cut it afterwards. Yeah, just like on the roof, just using the, uh, the suction uh, spray gun. This isn't paint, so it doesn't have to be pretty. That's it's got to be on there. So all I'm going to try to do is stabilize these uh, layers right here by gluing both sides to here, and then re-gluing this back down to there once I'm ready to relaminate it. It may not be perfect, but it'll be much more stabilized. Otherwise, I'd start having to take this entire thing apart just to pull this back, and then start opening up more and more and more. We have to get a spot where we stuck, where we stopped. Again, this is not ideal, but we've glued both surfaces. Now we should be able to glue it down. All right, so now that's laminated with the same glue that we're gonna do the rest of it with. All these other sections to go. So overall, this plan's working pretty well. Get rid of uh, the ripples that was in the the wood there. Now, if this wood was rotten, obviously I couldn't have done this. I'd have to bring it back some more. And then a lot of these gaps that you might see, that's pretty standard in this paneling anyways, but because this outside piece or the layer is actually fairly intact, it'll bridge most of those gaps and then the pylon will get rid of most of it, so I'm not going to try to bodywork any of that. That'd be a waste of time. I just have one last section to do down there, and then we'll, we'll glue that one on. Definitely. Uh, tell me how high, cause I can't see your mark. Uh, I'm good here. All right, it's gonna go in a tiny bit. All right. Ugh. I need to 
that out of the way for you. So you say it wasn't long enough, James. You have to start all over again. It's overhang. <laughs> than it was a lot better hey now we can let glue this part down figure we can use the uh, file on itself as a template to cut the uh, paneling ready yep I think so. Take it. Weird looking. Well, what do we think? We got a new sidewall, Yankee yeah. on it, and it seems to be pretty good. You did a good job there, Chad. It's a little long though. Oh, yeah, we're making more living quarters. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Of course, now we just have to trim that up, put the trim back on, and one more side. Well, there it is. It's not pristine or brand new, but it's pretty close to being good. At least a lot better than it was, because I could push on this, I could have pulled this whole... Well, you guys saw it. It was very loose. All right, let's put this back together, and maybe one more side. I haven't decided yet. The other side's not too bad. Now I'll go through all the boring parts of putting this back together. This trim I'm putting back down with uh, much longer screws. So, where are my sc oh, screws are over there. All right, that wasn't a lot of work. So I'm using these, uh, I don't know, two inch screws. I don't know if they're number eight, number four, number 16. I never know any of that stuff. So, Winnebago was just using these little short guys right there. And so they weren't really doing too much other than going into the plywood. But that's not going to be very helpful for what we're trying to do because we want to squeeze this, this front cap and secure it to the, uh, the sidewall. So the sidewall, you can see they do put framing in it. So I'm using these long screws. I'll drill everything out and so it actually will grab onto uh, the framing in there and actually squeeze everything together. I've done that all the way around. The last screw hole is right there, but I'm going to add an extra one because this is a decorative cap that secures everything down. I don't want the stress on the cap. So I'll just drill that out a new hole and put one last screw in there. And then we'll be ready to move on. pilot hole. Now I'll just uh, do a bigger hole to go through the plywood and the front molding because I just want to, I don't want to grab any of that. I want to grab 
the framing behind that. I lost my screw again. So that way, the screw is actually not grabbing onto anything. I want it to grab on right to here. Otherwise, all it does is start to push the wall away as it's drilling into here. Nice and tight there now. Now this screw won't have to take all the brunt of it. Well guys, I got lots of work to do on this coach, obviously. You may not know I'm doing a roof on it too. Uh, so that's a, a lot of questions I've gotten is how to relaminate sidewalls. Relaminating sidewalls is identical to doing these roofs. It's just you have to remove everything, actually do a good job. Uh, I know there are those epoxy vacuum bonding uh, kits out there. They will stabilize it, but they will not make it look great. At any rate, uh, I have to clean this up and reseal it. I won't reseal it until I'm done with everything else. That way I'm not doing triple the work. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and uh, I hope that helps somebody. But I think we can look at it. I'm really quite pleased with the way it turned out. Like I said, this was like flopping around and nice and loose and nice and strong now. First day of the job. <laughs> Got it. First time. All right, we can edit that out. I will say this is not going as well as I had hoped already. This is going to be pretty tedious. <laughs> that was just where they welded that. At the factory, they actually have this laid out. They CNC it all out, then they put the frame in. <laughs> That's crazy. And then the uh, inside wall panel actually gets laminated on top of that. So the outside's built, then the frame, then the uh, inside wall is laminated on there. But you can see there is a, a bow structure within that wall there. So that's what those screws are going to, and the screws underneath. Okay. Scrape away the rot. The only problem with the Mine leaks like 2017. I'm like, I come in, I like back my RV out, and right. I have like a four inch drop toward the curb. Right, dude. All of a sudden, I see water like, I hear water just pouring out on all down the door, out the entry door. I'm like, it's like somebody took a five gallon bucket of water. I'm like, are you kidding me, dude? I had to like, it took me like three rains, a bunch of water hoses before I finally like found the leak. I just went crazy with sealing everything off. Fortunately, it's a Winnebago and all that stuff is steel, which means it's just rusty under there now, but at least it's not like wood. Yeah.